Mike Severino joins us here in the flagship studio. Mike is CEO of Tessera Therapeutics, a company that is pioneering a new category of genetic medicine known as gene writing. Hot off the heels of sharing some promising new data here at the JP Morgan conference this week, Mike is here to tell us more about it. Mike, thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. So to get us started, Mike, tell us what is gene writing? Gene writing is a powerful new technology that allows us to make whatever change we need to make in the human genome to address human disease. That includes making short changes, fixing individual errors in the genetic code, SNPs, changing any letter into any other, to writing long segments, even entire genes into the genome to deliver new instructions. You know, today, the field is defined by the tool. You know, people think about CRISPR companies that knock things out as gene editors. They think of people who deliver uh, viral vectors for transgenes as gene therapy. And when you take cells out of the body and manipulate them and put them back in, you're a cell-based therapy. But what underlies all of that is the ability to deliver new instructions to enable cells to either regain function or provide entirely new capabilities. And that's what our gene writing platform will do. Incredible. Tell us about the data that you presented yesterday at the conference. Well, there's a tremendous amount of exciting new data that we have generated. The pace at which we're driving this platform forward is just absolutely remarkable. It's transformed just in the six months that I've been at Tessera. But specifically, yesterday, we presented new data from a number of non-human primate studies. And this is critically important because in our journey from a bioinformatics search to work in cell lines to murine models, moving to non-human primates is a critically important step. Non-human primate data in our field in genetic medicine translates with a very high probability into the clinic. And that's because we're not trying to use these models to discover what causes the disease we treat. We already know that. We're trying to use them to determine whether in a system much more closely related to a human, we can deliver our gene writers, they can have their intended effect, and when the answer to that is yes, the likelihood that we're gonna see efficacy in clinical studies is very, very high. More than 70%, maybe as high as 90% in our review of the field. Great, expand a little bit more on specifically what were the data that you shared, um, how that moves your programs forward and how you're thinking about the pipeline as it evolves over the next 12 months? Well, we share data in non-human primates on one of our core platforms, our rewriting platform. That's the ability to make these short changes to fix uh, incorrect letters in the human genome. And we've shown that we can deliver to non-human primates directly to the liver using non-viral delivery systems, which is very important, and get clinically relevant levels of editing. Levels of editing that allow us to make cures for diseases like phenylcatenuria, a condition that affects a wide range of patients, alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, Wilson's disease, and many more. We also presented important updates in our ability to write entire genes into the mm -hmm. genome. And that opens yet another huge area of possibility, both to restore function to cells and to program immune cells to track down and kill cancers in vivo. So it's been an exciting week. Something that I'm not sure is widely understood is the significance of being able to deliver using a non-viral delivery system. Can you expand on that a little bit for us? That's, that's critically important, and, and it's, it's complicated, and sometimes people don't understand the differences, and so I'm glad you asked the question. So today, we can't, the field can't deliver DNA mm -hmm. through non-viral means. And the reason for that is our cells have learned that invading DNA is a bad thing. And as soon as our cells see DNA that it doesn't recognize, it generates a very, very powerful innate immune response to, to, to eliminate that threat. And so we have to resort to these viral vectors that have their own challenges. They can be directly toxic. They're not terribly efficient. And many of them don't directly integrate the DNA into the genome. It persists outside of the genome where it's not very efficient. When we make our gene writers as all RNA constructs, mm -hmm. so a messenger RNA that makes the protein that does the work, and another RNA that we call the template that delivers the instructions, we can avoid those pitfalls. So that mRNA can be immunologically silent to the cell, mm -hmm. so it's not rejected, and it allows lipid nanoparticle delivery. Now, what lipid nanoparticle delivery systems are, are they're, they're very scalable, and they're an extension of the technology that's been used to deliver COVID vaccines to more than a billion people on the planet. So they're scalable, they're efficient, they're redosable, 
and they allow us to access a wide range of tissues in living systems, ultimately in patients. That's incredible. Tell us about um, your expectations for Tessera in the coming year. You've talked about tremendous speed of progress since you joined the company six months ago. Where do you see yourself 12 months from now? Well, we're going to continue to advance all of these platforms. So our gene writing platform, our rewriting platform, our ability to deliver to a wide range of tissues in vivo, getting ready for entry into the patients. We're going to continue to develop important data sets in animal models, both murine models and non-human primate models. And we're going to get ready to enter the clinic in the near future. Very exciting. And even a little bit further ahead, what are the biggest leaps that you see ahead for Tessera if you think three to five years from now? Well, I really think this technology has the ability to transform the practice of medicine. And that's not a small statement. But in medicine, you know, the secret that we don't like to talk about very much is it's very rare to deliver a cure. We can, we can often delay progression. We can ameliorate symptoms. And those are worthwhile aims when that's all you can do. But this technology allows us to get to the core driver of disease, which is the genes that underlie uh, our health as humans. And the ability to deliver a cure is just going to be absolutely transformational. And this technology holds that promise across just a wide range of disease states that manifest themselves in many organs throughout the body. And with the delivery technology and the writing technology uh, that we are driving here at Tessera, I think we really have that transformational potential. And I think that will start to re reveal itself over the next three, five years and beyond. That sounds incredible. We've talked about very interesting, promising proof of concept data that looks like it has the potential to carry us forward into transforming medicine down the road. Incredible. Thank you, Mike, for joining us. It's been a pleasure to be here. Thanks.